to Photoshop or not to Photoshop? That is the question. For real. Hey everyone, welcome to Keep Shooting Monday number 92. My name is Greg Cazillo from Cazillo.com. And I'm Kathy Azar from Catherine Azar Photography. So Kathy, we have a couple little news items we're going to talk about today. And uh, the first one that I saw, and it it's kind of ties in with the video that I did last week, mm -hmm. since you were not able to be here. Uh, first thing is, is a simple little gift that shows how stopping down the aperture affects your depth of field. And actually has it in the corner and it's actually a pretty cool little graphic and so if you're not sure if you don't quite understand check this little graphic out and I'll put definitely put a link over to it um, could be I'd like to see another one done maybe I'll do another one someday an actual aperture video mm -hmm. showing it in a different point of view showing it outside instead of just with a with a can that's very close up that maybe isn't as clear as it could be um, but it's not bad in general. So anyway, last week's video, I finally, finally, finally redid my basics of exposure video, uh, understanding your aperture, your shutter and your ISO. And you had mentioned something about, uh, using aperture priority all the time. Well, you, there's a comment under your video about <clears throat> someone using learning and recognizing how important aperture can be. And I use it a lot in sports like, because yep. if you're shooting, I do a lot of shooting baseball. If you watch the show long enough, you know my son's a big baseball player. And if I'm shooting him batting and then I'm going to shoot something out in the field or him running down the first baseline, the exposure will change significantly. So if I'm trying to shoot in manual, you can't make those adjustments mm -hmm. fast enough to get everything that I want to get. So I just make sure that my ISO is at a place where my shutter is going to vacillate in a what I consider a safe range. That's a big word. Vacillate, I know, my, did, my dad was an English teacher. Um, so I just shoot an aperture priority because I know what I want my depth of field to be. I know okay. I want the player to be in focus. And I usually shoot about four, 4.5 because mm -hmm. I want enough give and play in there. Yep. Um, and also we've got a bat out here and you know. <laughs> you know what's interesting, here's a question. Yes. Have you changed your shooting at all when you went from the 7,000 to the 610? Have you changed your aperture? Have you noticed a difference in depth of field when switching from one format to the other? You know what's funny? I, I, I think I do shoot a little deeper. I mean, I shoot more, I shot um, shallower with the 7,000 for some reason. Okay. I just like the, the, the deeper, the 4.5, I find that that works better for me. Yep. Um, and I'm not sure if that's because I switched cameras or whether I just from experience yep. as I've learned more. Um, but I did shoot with the 7,000 this weekend mm -hmm. um, just because I'm thinking, you know, with the, with the crop, it would help me in post having to edit less. Yep. Yep. Um, and I wasn't as happy with it. I missed my the 610. Like yeah. I just, Miss, there's something the about the full or? frame. I just yeah. found it was a little less grainy. Mm -hmm. um, I just. Well, the grain is going to come from a, a, being a three or four year old newer camera. Probably. Yeah. That has something to do with it. But I, I just, me, <laughs> I like my new camera. Yep. Interesting. So uh, anyway, any questions or anything about exposure, please let me know. Please take a look at that video. It's a really good one, and I was finally able to kind of get that out there and redo that video because I just needed to redo it. You know, Excellent. time for an update. So uh, we had an interesting question here that came in. From Herb. Yeah, so you want to read that off? I like the name Herb. I used just used Corel to enhance fall foliage. It worked magic of foliage shot. Your color shot of the rocks above, and we'll, sh we'll put that up, uh, up there for you, with the edited black and white below makes me wonder. The color shot shows what you and the camera actually saw. However, the enhanced is lovely, but doesn't reflect the reality. Leaning to editing as a way to polish by removing glitches, but struggling at pushing the image way beyond what the eye sees, photography or art. Great conversation. Yes. My first question though is what's Corel? I've never used Corel. Or... Corel Draw, and that's typically what most people will use. Corel Draw is more of a, of a painting and drawing application for the computer. A lot of people will use it for 
uh, with like a tablet and they'll do the actual drawing and all that stuff. Well, so like can it, you edit it with, edit pictures with it? You can. Yeah, a lot of people, it's it's not what it's 100% intended to do, okay. but yes, you can do a lot of stuff. And I've, I tested it out a number of years ago for like making photos more painterly when that was really in style Got you it. know back in the day and it, mm -hmm. it just didn't work for me it just okay. wasn't my thing wasn't my style but um so yeah it's more of a drawing and painting kind of a program so what is your take on editing do you like i think i already know this but a more simple edit or do you like to get very creative with your edits uh i am well it depends on what it is Dep shocking <laughs> greg used the word depends <laughs> it always depends Every, yeah. there's always a sliding scale in photography right uh, for portraits, for most of my stuff, for product photography, commercial stuff, it's pretty much shot as is with the lighting that's already set, and that's it. When it comes to landscapes, I'm a I have a little bit more leeway there, and I'll, I'm willing to edit a little bit more. And so a answer but, his question about the pictures that you did, and then I'll give my take on the, on the editing. Okay, well, this particular photo... I just thought that it, number one, you wanted to see the two of them side by side and see the difference. And the sky just, man, maybe it's a little saturated, a little bit too much, but the rest of like the foreground in the, you know, in the mountains and all that stuff, I like that. So maybe if I was to redo it now, I might back off on the sky a little bit. Mm -hmm. Isn't that funny how every time I pull up an image that I've edited several months before, I want to tweak it again. Yep, yep. and that's why I always say, back to what we talked about before in a, a, cl a class that I was teaching last mm -hmm. week, that's why you shouldn't store your JPEGs. Because you're going to want to re-edit You're going to want to re-edit it them. anyway, make yeah. some changes anyway, so why bother Because sometimes I don't, them. and it's easy just to go get them and give them to the client. I don't know. <laughs> Anyway, but. that's a whole other discussion. Yeah. So, yeah, you so know. Do you think depends. your top image was shot at a perfect exposure? Yes. Okay. In this particular one, yes. It's definitely the right exposure you in my pulled mind. Up, pulled yeah. up some of the blacks and, and saturations uh, and whatnot. Yeah, because your histogram is going to be pushed to the right a, g a good amount, and that's going to leave you a lot of leeway and a lot of space to be able mm -hmm. to play around with it if that's what okay. you want to do. All right. Um, so I also have was thinking about editing this week because mm -hmm. I came across a website called Jinky Art, and it's a photographer from, for, from Australia who does some really cool uh, fantasy edits okay. to her things, and and some non fantasy like the one I'm looking at is a little boy with an owl on his lap, which is obviously not real; it's photoshopped in. But she also does some really unique things. And lucky for me, who wants to learn how she does these things, she also has a shop that she sells both. Um, actions and tutorials on how she does them. So mm -hmm. I'm looking into that as something I want to to purchase. Yeah, I think that'd be a fun thing to be able to do. Yeah. And uh, so we'll, we'll put a link up for that. And there's actually some really cool stuff. Mm -hmm. Whether she it's, did. you know, it's all art, it's all ideas. It's your it's taste, all... it's what you want to try. Exactly. And it's always funny to me how people, especially, it seems like the newer crowd, the newer photographers are the ones that say, oh, I don't want to Photoshop, I think it's stupid. You know, you should never edit your images. You think? Yeah, and it's funny because photoshopping or editing has been around forever and ever and ever. See, I remember making the mistake when I first started, and even as I learn new programs, we have another uh, program that we're going to review for you shortly. When I get a new tool, mm -hmm. I tend to go overboard. <laughs> and I look yep. at some of those pictures that I did very early on and go, Oh my, just because you can doesn't mean you should. Like yes. the skin is porcelain and the eyes are popping out and the teeth are bright white. Yeah. Because you can, you're learning how to play with it. And then you learn how you, the pendulum swings all the way to this <laughs> side. And then you go, okay, maybe. Yep, yep. The, the, perfect, yeah. the perfect analogy for that mm -hmm. is season to taste. Yes. But it's, it's the perfect, it's, uh, I'm trying to think who would say that. Uh, it was some kind of a, it was a chef? Like, it was like a chef okay. or somebody like that. Or, Julia Child or someone like that. No, maybe it wasn't, it wasn't her. What's, what's the guy's name? That Emerald? Was, or Emerald. Okay. Uh, maybe it was him that would use that term, season to I'm taste. I'm not sure. So, you know, just a little bit goes, you know, one family might, one mom might, you know, season, you know, a chili or something mm -hmm. hotter than another one would. Yeah. I know my mom would make, it, make the chili a lot hotter than <laughs> you probably would. I don't know. I like you know? spicy stuff. <laughs> But, but yeah, anyway. it's, it's what you like and it's also what your clients like. You yeah. know, I had a client recently ask me to do something that I wouldn't normally do, like 
perhaps a little selective color. Yeah. And But if that's what the client wants, I'll do it for yeah. them. Especially if they're paying extra. But, right? <laughs> but some people say, I won't do that because that's not my style and I don't want that going out as my style. Yeah. I won't advertise that I do that. I'm not going to put that image on my website, but if mm -hmm. the client wants it, that's what I'm going to give yeah. them. That's my personal opinion. Absolutely. And there's actually been a couple of articles posted over on Petapixel that prove this and prove the whole editing thing, how it's been forever. Uh, the first one is beauty retouching from the early 1900s of uh, Joan Crawford. And yeah, there's a pretty big difference in between the edited and the non-edited version. They actually removed the birthmark from her cheek. Yeah, yeah. And so it really did, you know, they really did do a, quite a bit to it. And what these guys are doing it on a negative or they're doing it and then they're creating a copy negative from it. They're doing a lot of work in order to actually do this instead of I can't even imagine sitting our butts in front of a computer screen <laughs> and you know in front of Photoshop and being done. Uh, the other one that was up here was the Adams retouching machine, which fascinating named after Ansel Adams. I'm sure. Basically, what it comes back to is editing that four by five, that big huge negative and doing some work to it so that it looks better. Ansel Adams, he would always edit a photo and work on it inside a light room, or yeah, inside a light room, oh my goodness. It, with his enlarger, you know, inside of the dark room is the word I was, is the word I was looking for uh -huh. in his dark room. And um, edit it with the enlarger, get it set. Then he would make a copy negative of that edited image so that it looked really good and perfect so that he could reproduce it again. So uh, Photoshop and editing and retouching has always been a part of the art of photography, quote unquote. So um, I'm just trying to figure out if it's do it really, a little bit really or do it a lot. It really comes down to your own taste. I'm just trying to see if it was really named after Ansel Adams. Uh, yeah, if we probably read this. Uh, we'll figure it out. Yeah, I'm pretty yeah. sure it was. 200, sold was originally for $295 in the <gasps> mid-1900s. Holy That's moly. a lot of money from back then. It is. Holds negatives up to 8 by 10 inches. Yeah, so anyway. Um, a couple other Photoshop tutorials that I found. First one is a little 8-minute Photoshop tutorial. Great video. Um... If you guys haven't done a lot with Photoshop and especially the new Photoshop CC 2014, there's some awesome tools in there that I highly suggest playing with and a $10 a month charge goes and you're getting some really awesome features on a regular basis. So check that out. That's number one. Okay, I've been ignoring you yeah. <laughs> and researching. You have to put up a link to this too. This okay. is um, Monday Mood Board Vintage Photo Retouching and it shows some pretty crazy stuff. Look at that. <laughs> That's funny. When we we'll put that link well, up, you'll put, put it the up and put the picture up so that when yeah. I laugh, you'll see it. That's, That's good. The actual Adobe Photoshop channel on YouTube. I like him. Yeah, some excellent editing. The photo that he edited here is a little bit over the top, but you can definitely do a lot to an image, and it doesn't mean that it's ruining the image. It's just over the top and it's just something different. It's your art. See, I didn't think it was over the top. I thought yeah. it was neat. So that was a, a pretty neat thing. So check out both of those if you want to learn more about Photoshop, like our friend Kathy needs I'm to learning. here. I'm learning. I am, slowly but surely. Yeah, a little bit at a time. So for about a month, I've been testing out this little thing that Kathy is wearing right now called a lens flipper by GoWing. Comes out for a Canon, a Canon mount, a Nikon mount, and a Sony mount. Uh, so you can you can purchase it for any of those. Basically, it's going to allow you to very quickly switch your lenses. It actually works really well. Uh, Kathy and I were just having a discussion about the different ways. Show them how it works as I'm talking, Kathy. Yep, okay. uh, we're actually having a discussion on the speediness of this system. And there's really four ways that you can kind of uh, switch lenses when you need to switch lenses and you only have one body. Um, yeah, it's really quick. <laughs> <laughs> as you're, <laughs> it takes Stumbling. a little getting used to. And in Kathy's defense, she's never used it until today. Okay. Yep. Um, but it, it, it really is really quick. Uh, once you get used to it, it works really well. 
Anyway, there's four different ways you can go. Number one, you can shoot out of a bag, put like a shoulder bag on. That's the slowest way. Uh, or number four, if you want to say it the other way, as we talked about. I'm going to practice. Um, yeah, so number four would really be having a bag and putting your lenses in and out of a bag on your shoulder. That's going to be the slowest. Um, the next way would be to have like a belt system, like a think tank belt system and have separate pockets for each lens. That's going to be the next fastest way. The only problem with that is, is that you have to then put your, you want to put your lens caps back on. Right. The, the rear lens cap back on that lens. And that's where we always lose lens caps too, or I stick them in weird places and yeah, forget about yeah. them. Yeah, so that's something you need to think about and work on. The next way, the next fastest is definitely using this lens flipper because it's covering the back of that lens. And when you have the hood on your camera, it's upside down. See, I'm faster. Yep, there you go. Just that little bit of practice. There's a couple mm -hmm. times it, uh, she's gotten faster with it. Um, it. The lens is upside down, so the hood is covering the front of the lens and you don't really have to worry about it. Uh, and then the ultimate, the fastest way when you need to shoot with multiple lenses is to have two cameras. So that's the only way that's gonna make it any quicker. The short of two cameras, this is really neat. Like I said, I, I was fumbling a little because I was tr having trouble lining things up. There's a red dot where you line up the dot on your lens to hook it in, yep. and then there's a release right here. So as you get used to it, you know which lens, which one to push. I'm just always scared. I'm gonna push the wrong one and have my <laughs> lens hit the floor. Yeah. Um, but once you get used to that, it's super quick. The only thing that I would want different mm -hmm. is perhaps to have more of a black rapid on this side. More padding. A tight little, yeah, I need more padding because yep. that's going to bother me, especially if I have my long lens hanging, yep. uh, hanging on it. But for Greg, we determined that... <laughs> it's a little bit too short. There's another switch that he <laughs> needs. Yeah, so first... for Greg... <laughs> It's it's just too short, and this Watch is, your mic. Yeah. <laughs> it's so, in your armpit. <laughs> yeah, it's just way too short for a big guy, and it's just not a good position to carry it. So what I would do, and this is the and I've used it this way from day one, is I use my black rapid double strap, which is of course now all twisted, and I put it on my double strap. So. I'll show you what I do with it here. I actually tie that thing in a knot, or I'm gonna go over to the hardware store. I'm actually gonna pick up some uh, additional webbing so I don't have to do that. But, uh, so I take This is my... webbing for those of you who are thinking he yeah. means like something crazy. So anyway, let me show you what I do with this. Tie this little in a little knot and adjust it. All right, so now I have this hanging where I like it to hang, which is on the left side. And I can attach. And now I have my normal black rapid and I'm carrying it and it doesn't feel heavy at all. You barely even feel the weight of it. So I can easily switch. And like Kathy said, you just need to get used to not minding your body dangling by itself. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I, found that, I found that letting go of the lens that's on the flipper felt kind of funny because I'm dropping my lens. I don't know, it just, yep. you got to get used to trusting that it's there and it's holding it. Yep, exactly. And it's no different than using a Black Rapid. Um, and there's flipping back and forth. It's so. a brilliant idea. I remember when we saw it first online. We saw it online. I yep. thought, oh, I want one of those. And even before they sent, and this is actually a demo unit that they sent over. So thank you very much for that. Absolutely. Um, and we're also hoping to be able to talk to them more when we get up to the, photo expo. To the expo in a couple of weeks. Uh, but the first thing I saw was, and I actually had some question or a tweet or something, I said, do you have this for Black Rapid? And they said, well, we're working on it. Mm -hmm. So hopefully they come out with something like a little Black Rapid uh, add-on or something, or something yeah. like that. Um, so I, yeah, great I thought system. you were going to say, do they make these for big guys? <laughs> <laughs> and what will Kathy say? Do they, make them in, do they make them in pink or do they make them in, in like a blinged out ones? I don't know if they make, well, they probably make pink webbing. You can get pink webbing if you wanted. You could like bejewel this. <laughs> yeah, I don't Just know wait. about that. Just wait. <laughs> Especially not mine. We'll get you your own. How's that sound? You can, you can work on your own. So uh, I definitely recommend the lens flipper by Go Wing. 
check this thing out. Um, pricing is very reasonable for what it is and what you can do with it. And again, you're just working back and forth. And I think it's easy switch. Yeah, easy switch. The hardest part, like I said, is getting used to putting your lens on. And over time, you get a lot faster yep. with it. So this is definitely faster and easier than using a camera bag. Thumbs so. up. Thanks, guys. The Lens Flipper by Going. Keep shooting. See you. Hey everyone, Greg Cazillo from Cazillo.com. Let me try that once more. Hey everyone, Greg Cazillo from Cazillo.com. Welcome to Keep Shooting Monday, number 92. My name is Greg Cazillo and I did that already, so let's try it again. <laughs> <coughs> hey everyone, welcome to Keep Shooting Monday, number time. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be a great outtake for the end of the show. <laughs>